This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. And a very good evening and welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry. Uh, we are just 11 days away from the road to Cheltenham, although the gentleman or two of the gentlemen I've got with me this evening will probably be more interested in the hop to Doncaster, as I'm calling it. <laughs> we have had a pretty shocking week. Um, a couple of, I'm trying to keep this upbeat, but uh, a couple of desperate, um, well, deaths in the cricketing world. One today with Shane Warne, Rodney Marsh passing away. And racing was once called the great triviality. I not know by who, but um, uh, we uh, we probably are even more trivial than ever this week with the dreadful goings on in Ukraine as well. But I can dispose the, this. Uh, I can give my guest this week, um, Sir Lee Keys, Sir John Leng, and Sir Adam Norburn. I'm giving them all a knighthood because if Gallo, Gavin Williamson can get one, we all can. <laughs> A man who presides hey. over the algorithm hour level fiasco, leaked inf information from defence, was sacked from the cabinet before, uh, was involved in the free school meals fi uh, fiasco and mixed up marrow with Toji with Marcus Rasford. A catalogue of failure. The biggest puzzle of the week isn't the Grimthorpe or even the Greatwood tomorrow. It's how this man has got a knighthood. A possible candidate for the BHA, but... We must crack on, so I'll say good evening to the boys. We are all knighted this evening, and it's a 10-race pot, pot puree from uh, the triumvirate of courses that we've got on ITV. Five from Kelso, three from Doncaster, two from Newbury, and I'm sure that John or, uh, or Lee may well be throwing in something from Lingfield or Savile on the all-weather. Before we crack on, I must, say, I must point us in the direction of an excellent podcast earlier in the week on the Handicap Weights. If you haven't listened to it, uh, hosted by Catherine, Catherine Fry, Lee and John were involved as well, and uh, I thought an excellent debut. First time out, from the uh, Irish contender Declan Carroll, at least, uh, well, he was, um, he, he certainly wasn't not off, was he, Jack, gentlemen? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Andy. Good evening, Adam, John. Evening, chaps. I thought I'd just get us uh, sort of, you know, get us rolled up. I thought the mention of Gavin Williamson would stoke John's fire uh, significantly. <laughs> I'm still, uh, it's oh, still the most amazing, if it's answers on a postcard, if anybody can tell me why that man has got a night, well, I, I can give you one, but, you know, but Jesus, I mean, that is, I mean, that's harder to work out than the Grimthorpe, it really is. You've got to be sex offenders or, or failures or be corrupt, it appears, to get nice <laughs> of these. Oh. I think I think that fills the criteria. Just, yeah. Greedy just... Betty's not asked who she hits with the sword, is she? No. <laughs> no. I thought that uh, I thought that I thought Greedy Betty might uh, veto that. Yeah. Not but hey ho, but um, we must crack on because we've got to keep this under an hour. So um, answers on a postcard, if you can tell me why the catalogue of failure that is Gav Gavin Williams. That's a good name for a horse, actually. Catalogue of failure. I might actually, uh, I might actually see if that name is available. Um, we must crack on. Um, so we're going to start with our three best bets of the week, hopefully to build your Cheltenham pots. Um, I'll go the the one pointers first. I'll come to Lee first. So, so Lee Keys first. Okay, okay. Uh, just uh, briefly, the the one fifteen at Newbury for me there is little doubt in my mind that uh, Counter Rico should be favourite for this on the book. Um, I, his 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 effort in the Cotswold I think was quite quite noteworthy. I, th I, th I think he ran above his above par. In the Cotswold, the form, if you look uh, three starts back when splitting two for gold and Jet is about is about the best form on offer in this race. He is very tricky, though. He hangs a bit in a finish. And that's the obvious downside that this will take quite a bit of skill from Kieran Buckley um, to to steer him on the running. But he has got the abilities off the right, right sort of mark in, in what is a very, very, very moderate veterans race. Nothing in really... A massive heart and I thought my one point win 
would be Kauta Rico at four to one. And if anyone wants to lay off short in the closing stages, that would be obviously a wise choice. I could see him. Uh, I could see him having a little bit of a look at that elbow. Yes, <laughs> to, yeah, the Spanish archer. Yeah. Just, shall I, shall I, well, although he probably wouldn't want to go round again, but um, yeah, it wasn't a bad run in the Cotswolds, uh, was it at all? That was uh, a decent run. Uh, Adam, I'll come to you next. Okay, we'll go up to Doncaster uh, for the two twenty mares novice hurdle. Um, we've got a good heads up today of the ground at Donny. It was very soft after. Um, some overnight and morning rain, and this is going to take some getting. It's the ri- the River Don for f- for mares, as I like to see it. And I'm going to go with Holly Hartingo, trained by Alistair Ralph, ridden by Jonathan Burke. She has won two races this season, two novice hurdles, um, looking progressive in doing so. It's more the manner of the way she's gone about things, and her uh, size and scope looks like a horse with uh, plenty of potential. It's a good race. As I say, we need some. We need plenty of stamina in the bank. She's bred uh, well, well bred to stay three miles by well chosen, who's, who stays forever. Um, I wanted to take on the favourite Getter Tonic, who's very short and, and um, although ran a good race at Warwick last time, I think um, she has uh, stamina, stamina to prove more than Holly Hartingo. There's one or two others that you could you could fancy, but Holly Hartingo is the one for me uh, at a fair price. I think that is right. It's about nine to two at the moment. Has been backed. I think there was some, when I was looking last night, Adam, I think there was some, about some eights available on this. If you go back to her first race, that first race at Ludlow, uh, where she won, she beat next door to Alice, who ran a decent race this afternoon at Doncaster. Miss Fairfax, who reopposes, was third, has won since. Uh, the <coughs> If you go down to the sixth, Sabrina, that one this week at, uh, where was it, Wincanton. Flying Nun won next time out. Jaunty Freya won next time out. That's pretty strong form from that race at Ludlow. And the form last time out was pretty decent as well. So I think you've got to, that was, um, it was on my long short list of, of bets as well, Holly Hartingo. So I should be rowing in with you uh, there and probably taking Miss Fairfax as a bit of a saver. But I would like to get against Getter Tonic. John, your one pointer, please. It was fairly short and sweet. Um, Salonica going up in trip at long last at uh, Lingfield in the 1249. They had the three qualifying runs and they decided they wanted another one. They stuck Aled Beach on. Uh, that wasn't competitive at all, which was pretty much what I expected. Goes up in trip tomorrow. Holly Doyle on, Aled off. Good swap. Horse is desperate for this trip. One point win. Lovely. Right. Nice, short and succinct. And I'll complete the uh, the one pointers there. Um, I'm not completely certain about this one. I think they had a bit of a they had a bit of a float up last time out um, with King Darjon in the 255 at Doncaster. Um, I've got a feeling that there might be some other targets for this in um, uh, over the spring period. But I don't think it was off a yard last time out, to be honest with you. They've managed to get it down to a mark of 138, actually last one of 135. Um, the ground may just be a little bit softer. Going back to Adam's ground point there, I thought it just looked like a pudding there this afternoon. Um, could almost do with a bit of rain to loosen it up at, at Doncaster, but it was given as soft, but on times it... It, to to uh, to quote Lydia and uh, uh, to quote Lydia and Hendo, it was uh, it was heavy, um, mm. and um, I think yeah, you know you'll need to stay all day there. But King Darjeon in a race where certainly see I didn't fancy the favourite, the big bite, so I'll have a point on King Darjeon at around nine to two will be my third best bet. Right, let's get kick on with the uh, the two pointers. Um, I'll come to Lee again first. Okie dokie. Uh, the two pointer goes in the 150 at Newbury. This is quite it's quite an interesting race. Um, but I'm, I'm quite keen on, on Glen Forza because um, uh, this is also that's unexposed at this sort of trip for his new yard. And I think this is his perfect trip. I don't think he's a three mile horse. I think the way he travels, you know, he's, he's quite he's quite hardened himself on the bridle, jumps well. He's up five from Musselburgh. And it's that kind of race where, um, you know, these these horses that are in here are all sort of um what's the word um there's always an excuse for them doubling falls not the best jumper um i'm not really a fan of senior citizen off a, off a career high mark these are prominent in the betting and i think glenn forza because because he's like rediscovered his form over that two six i think the drop back to two falls not a problem at all and um and and he's on 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 old form 
um, this marks no problem. So that's where my uh, two-point win bet shall lie on Glenn Forza in the 150 Newbury at 11 to 2. Can I pinch with Bet365? You certainly can, sir. Yeah, 11 to 2. It's a standout with Bet365. Get it before it goes. John, I'll come to you for your two-pointer. Right, then. <laughs> come in, John. Yeah, you, you caught me in the hot there. Um, to me, far off out of Doncaster, Silver Eclipse, Carson Distance winner, handles soft ground, nice low weight in what I think will be a fairly attritional heat. It's a competitive race, but he should be there about. He's only £5 higher than the last win. And uh, I was going to be a wanker, but I better go two points win. <laughs> Good lad. Can't, we can't have any of that. Not with Adam on the show. So I was, I was, I've, I've been scared out of it. Adam yeah. sorted us all out, really. Yeah, we're yeah. all scared. No each, no each way anymore. Uh, There's no each way on this show. <laughs> no each way cop outs on this show. So a couple of points silver eclipse. I could do you nine to two, John. I think uh, yeah, the, uh, the man, the, no, Willie Willie Hills, and still nine to two on silver eclipse in That's that place. Because near as I would say. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll chip it with me two points, and I'll I'll save our uh, each way man until last on this round. <laughs> I'll um I'll go with um I'll go against um probably my bet I I must admit the racing we had a slight well, not wasn't a disagreement was it pre race I didn't think the racing was I thought it was competitive tomorrow but it didn't really float the boat shall I say um but um, I've probably got my head sort of eleven days down the road really rightly or wrongly um but I'm going to go the one fifty with um and, and again I, I agree with Lee here all these horses are a bit of a much of a muchness but. I'm going to go with Tamrock de Maffern because Pumpkin always wins this race, doesn't he? I mean, how many times has he won this? Yeah. And it does look as though Tamrock de Maffern was probably <laughs> set up. He's going to be sort of set up for this. Um, he's had, oh God knows how many wins he's had in this race. I think he's won it five of the, I think he's won it five of the last eight years, um, um, Pumpkin, um, Paul Nichols. Um, and he's got a couple in this, but I think Tamrock de Maffern is probably the best of these. The two well. Two mile four is probably around his sort of trip. Um, he wasn't particularly fancied at Sandown. I think he looks a well handicapped horse off 142. Um, he has been nibbled the way out in the market. I think the prices are uh, getting probably because of the sort of Nichols record in this. Um, but I will go and take a couple of points on Tamrock de, uh, Tamrock de Mathan with Mr. Cobden on board at around five to one will be my second best bet. And I'll come to Adam to complete the round. Well, let's have a look at Kelso. We've got a cracking card there. Mm. Um, soft ground. Uh, the 132 is a grade two. Uh, 28 bags to the winner. Cracking race. I don't like the front end here. Um, North Lodge and Richmond Lake have, have faced each other before and make the market. Some uh, sectionals and, and time figure guys are going to probably going to tell me that they're way ahead. Um, but I like a couple against it, and I'm going to be slightly controversial and split my stakes here. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a method a, I use. It's a method I use quite a lot. Split is wanker. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. If the if the market shapes up uh, uh, very much against how I expect, then I I like to take two or three against the front end if I can. But I do it quite often in my own punting. I do that quite a lot. If you don't, if you don't, if in effect, if you don't like laying the the front two, um, yeah. which you could probably do here at fairly short odds, uh, but it is a bit of an anathema to people. Then you could probably lay them at current betfair prices. Probably just lay them around even money. But back yeah. in the cut two or three against, it obviously has the it's always, almost like a pseudo lay. I don't so think there's any shame in doing so. No, um, not, not at all. Not um, at all. Massive shame. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Quiet in the cheap seats at the back, otherwise I'll have you sanctioned. I've got to give you guys something to chew on, haven't I? Um, yeah. But anyway, the two I'm going to go for are, um, in betting order, Sherlock Jack and Bold Endeavour, two horses I've seen this season at, at uh, Weatherby. Sherlock Jack um, clocked a very decent time in his Irish point and is a very imposing physical specimen. Could be something out of the ordinary. And um, if you look at the Weatherby run last time, he won absolutely hard held. It's impossible to know what he's got uh, 
under the or or, or, or or what what skeleton was holding on to. I suspect, as I say, I suspect he's he's above average, and uh, the price I, I want to be have him on side. Um, the other one is Bold Endeavour from the uh, the Uber Inform uh, Laura Morgan. I think this horse is is potentially a little bit special. Uh, may have gone under the radar with a couple of low key wins, but I've been very impressed with 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 the the manner of of the wins at Seji and at Weatherby, particularly last time out when he beat uh, a very uh, small but select field. Uh, was under the pump uh, with a circuit to go. I'm not. Sh- I'm, I'm hoping it wasn't the ground that he was struggling on. But the the further they went, the better he went. I think he might be s- slightly off the snap again round here. It's sharper and a little bit of a drop in trip. But I do think this horse has got tons of ability. And if it does become a stamina test, I think Bold Endeavour is massively overpriced. And uh, around eight or nine to one, I think he's a cracking bet. I, I was I was going to go two points with him. I'm just going to save on uh, on Charlotte Jack. So they're they're the two in that race for me. But I could even go with add a, add a third and go with it. it's good for good to laugh. He's got a massive engine, and seems to have uh, converted his flat form to uh, this sphere. Doesn't really jump particularly well at the moment uh he could improve even further if, if that clicks i think it's a cracking race i do I'll, I'll just take on the front two with bold endeavor and shallock jack i think that's a, i think it's a cracking strategy actually and one that I, I i use quite a bit as well even to trade with at times as, as well sat at, uh, sat at home on the machine uh, and i think you probably beat the prices on both of those two on the machine but currently you're looking at 13 to 2 shallop jack bold endeavors around nine to one so that would be uh, a quite an interesting uh, play against those i think i do like charlotte jack as well i'm interested what you said that uh, you see him there up at weatherby i thought that was quite an impressive performance and bold endeavor as i say if you are an in-running player and can and uh, a happy playing that way you might just get a bigger price in running given his run given his run style you might just want to nick a bigger price there but no perfectly uh, perfectly acceptable way of of staking that we'll we'll, uh, we'll take that one on board right um let's get to the uh, the three points um where are we going to start let's come straight back um let's come back to john i'll start with you on your three pointers righty oh um espoir de Rome was a bit of a letdown on debut at first glance and then Fiddler on the Roof went on to run pretty well in other races really uh, nearly won the Hennessy and nearly won at Ascot just got nutted on the line which gave the form a bit more substance than it looked out at the time um, obviously he's been off a long time but he, he goes perfectly alright fresh um, I think he's well treated here Um We'll stay the trip well. If the rain gets in, I'm, I'm not so concerned about the ground situation. And more importantly, I'm not all that concerned about the opposition because I think <laughs> I think I'd agree with you there. I went through I went through this race last night and I was looking at all of the all of the opposition to Espoir de Rome and you could have a question mark against all of them. Yeah, especially itchy feet at the prices because. I just don't get that all. I, th- I think Bill Bailey's found found a nice little opening for him eh? mm. on the comeback trail. Right, three points on Espar de Rome. Let's just have a quick look, see what price he is at the moment. Uh, seven to four is the top price. That's, that's enough to do, I'm afraid. Espar de Rome, not a problem at all. Um, Lee, I'll come to you for your three pointer. Well, as John's gone all blogger. Um, <laughs> We need to rescue this, and um, we go to the three thirty. The Grim thought, what a fantastic! I love the Grim thought. It is grim. It's going to be grim it's over be three grim. miles two on soft heavy. There's a three pointer in here. There's a there's a, a definitely a good bet. Mister Malarkey is the bet. Uh, six to one. Incredibly generous. This horse um, for me, uh, obviously, it's the change of scenery and the wind up. The change of scenery from the dairy farmer. And still we haven't had an answer to the question on the last podcast. Why does milk not go off in cows? Um, maybe, we can ask Tizard, maybe we can ask Tizard why milk doesn't go off in cows. Um, <laughs> what do you think, John? That's it. be a good question to ask, wouldn't it? Yeah. Why doesn't it go? He sits there in, in the warmth. Yeah. Why, does, why doesn't it go off? 
should be um, cheese coming out, shouldn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a science <laughs> question. We're science based on this show, and and it's a question that needs answering. And no listeners came back with the answer. Terrible. <laughs> Obviously, no dairy farmers amongst you. But anyway, so. Yes, Mr. Malarkey, um, obviously the, the change of scenery from the Tizard Yard, the wind up, um, when you consider that Richard Bandy's 23% over fences, loves a chase that does Bandy. And um, and bearing in mind, this horse won a listed handicap of 150 last year, was third in the Racing Post Trophy of 155, and gets 142 against these. There's hardly anything, really, that, that you'd be worried about in this um, to any sort of massive worryingly scale six to one is, is massive um as long as this horse has got a hobby and, and the best jockey in the race harry bannister massively underrated um so yes six to one all in three points this this is my comeback <laughs> this is it trying to smash it out the trying to smash it out of the park yeah. this used to this used to be a four mile of this race um way back in the mid 80s i think it was dropped to it was dropped from four miles to the current trip back in 1989 um, but i can remember this being a four miler so that dates me <laughs> that dates me a bit yeah i, I went through this race lee and i uh, to be honest with you i thought arthur wouldn't even go on the ground yeah was, mr mark hill sluice through it Absolutely. yeah which is well i mean i quite like powerstown park as a horse but i was a bit worried about whether he'd actually go on the ground storm control usually pulled managed to pull himself up surely cloth capo is Pretty well handicapped now. This is a bit of a spin up for the uh, for the national. So well, you think, really. yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, I quite like Le Milos as a horse. I think he's a tough and gritty animal, but seven to two was plenty, um, plenty short enough. But hey ho, there we, uh, there we go. I'll, I'll leave Adam till last. I'll shut my three pointer in the ring. Um, I'm not going to go each way. Can't can't do it. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to throw three points at uh, autumn evening. The uh, the nuts and hay may well work from uh, uh, the Irish contingent. Um, I thought this was a good run last time out from uh, from autumn evening. Um, and I'm just a bit worried whether the ground will actually be soft enough for Metier. Three to one looked plenty short enough. Bouvardier is coming back from a a massive layoff um and i wasn't that keen on that call me i like as a horse but there wasn't an awful lot of strength in depth in this and if you look at um if you look at autumn evenings run last time out uh, when he was third at 27 in a leopardstown handicap that actually reads pretty well he traded at 1.54 in running he's a strong traveling horse um there were some decent horses around him uh call me lyrene magic tricks you know, horses like that back in fifth was dropped the anchor. I know he's very, very well fancied for a race at Cheltenham, well, depending where he goes. I think he's actually in a Coral Cup. I think he was put up last night. I think actually Kevin Blake put him up last night on the old At The Races preview. Uh, and there were a few decent horses in behind. But uh, I thought Autumn Evening, uh, Sean O'Keefe, Jesse Harrington, Autumn Evening, um, he has been nibbled at. So I'm just trying to have a look at the, uh, the price here and clicking away. Uh, furiously um he's around 11 to 2 so i'll have three points at 11 to 2 autumn evening uh for the uh, irish to get uh well cheltenham month off to a off to a good start by nicking some more cash this time scottish cash uh, up there at 11 to 2 uh, autumn evening is my three pointer and that leaves us to complete the round mr adam norman i was tempted to join um john on in tipping espoir de roma he's just a little bit skinny for my liking mm. but um i can see I can see why um, you'd want to back him. I'm going to uh, I'm going to throw in. Uh, we're going to go back to a race that we discussed earlier, where you uh, picked King Dodge on, Andy. Um, mm. It's a two fifty five at Donny. Mm. The horse I I just can't get away from is Cheddleton at the top there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he, he keeps niggling away at me, and and I, I just <laughs> think there's a there's there's another win in him, and I just think this this race for me just shapes up perfectly for him ultra consistent uh they tried two and a half last time and he was just a little bit keen he just runs with so much enthusiasm and mm. zest i think he does probably pref want a little bit further than two these days he keeps getting slightly outpaced at the wrong time but i just think this will this will suit him this this now now it's turned very soft i think it suits him really well um 
And I, I got it down to two personally. The big bite was his favourite, but I didn't really fancy him at the, at the odds. Very tricky to win with. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I'm not sure he revels in in deep ground. I want something that, that really, really, really wants wants soft ground. And King Darjan, I'm I'd be concerned about him on the ground, frankly. Yeah. I, I, I do I do think he needed it last. I wouldn't say needed it. I just thought he'd tighten up. For, for, for that mm. last run, it was a competitive race behind Fernandula Sivola, who came out and won again the week after. So it, it was solid form. They finished in a heat, but um, it looked a, a pretty strong race. But um, back on this heavy ground, I, I, th- I think you're right. I think they've got a target, probably air or maybe yeah, Aintree, I, I, I did wonder about um, that. Yeah. But he can pick this up on the way. I just think David England, um, good, good enough jockey at a level, but I'm not sure he's he's a sort of a Saturday jock. So yeah. I, I, it might be that they're trying to get it down to that sort of 135, 134. Well, something yeah, there. I, I, I think he'll be there. Yeah, he's, he's there to win, Andy. But I just, yeah. I, I just, yeah. I just think, I just think Chaddleton is is ready to win again. Um, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm a little bit sad that Super Shawnee Quinlan's gone to Kelso for a, a big book of rides there. He always yeah. rides rides Cheddleton, and, and this is the first time the horse has has got a different jockey. But uh, mm. it's a pretty straightforward ride. There's a, there's there's quite a few here I don't fancy. Bundor and does what he does. Cedar Hill is a I think he's a is a Kelso specialist, and this is up mm. in grade. Malistic, I don't know what to expect to be honest. After a year off, a long break and a wind off, isn't he? Yeah. It's a bit of a dark horse. He, he, you could see it drifting out to nine or ten. You know, he's pulling at four, four or five to one. Uh, yeah. It doesn't really, it doesn't really appeal. So I'm going to go Cheddleton, um, balls deep at what a, what looks like a, a good price to me, nine to two, five to one. I think there's a bit of. I think even though there's a couple of non-runners, Fanzio and Gaelic Coaster are out, and there could be some more non-runners tomorrow. I don't know what the ground's going to do at. Um, at uh, Doncaster, but I think you get a bit of eleven to two on Cheddleton at the moment. Um, so I don't think it's anywhere near as open as the market suggests, Sandy. No, no, you, you're probably right there. I, I, I certainly, I certainly couldn't back the big bite. Let's put it that way. Not at the price. Mm. Not, not at the price. Well, that completes the uh, the one, two, three on the uh, on the best bet. Some interesting stuff there. Um, remains for us to uh, whiz through, as I described it, the ten race potpourri that uh, ITV serve up tomorrow and as we um, as we uh, as they got five from Kelso it must be their only appearance on the box isn't it um, and then some pretty good decent racing uh, we'll return to Kelso for the uh, now the 132 was originally the 130 this but they changed the time at uh, the premier novice hurdle um, we've already heard Adam's thoughts on it uh, boys uh, any thoughts on this John Lee yeah I mean I, I agree with Adam uh, that I'm against Richmond Lake. That was seen to maximum effect at Haydock last time. And Haydock suits that kind of ride. Mm. Um, and there's arguments, if, if if anyone that's back in Richmond Lake, well, there's arguments for the ones behind. Because even, even the rag at 33s, I think Donny Boy, that pulled really hard. Nelson was held up out the back, jumped poorly. Didn't get beat that far. Um, it's it's one of those. Obviously, if you, you look at the second to John Bond, ooh, second to John Bond, and mm. I think that's the obvious sort of form line take. But it, but to me, I know Richmond Lake and North Lodge met at Aintree earlier in the year, with obviously North Lodge coming out on top, but now he's eleven pounds worse. Um, so that was my reason, same as Adam, for looking elsewhere. Uh, Bold endeavour, I, I agreed with him. Um, I think that's a nice prospect. Um, certainly, it's still a bit raw, to be honest, and that, that's yep. that's 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 quite the uh, the eye catching thing with Bold Endeavour. Yep. Um, so, Thanks. so there was that. But as I said, I wouldn't put anyone off like backing say Nel- Nelson if you fancied a big price because that jumped terribly at Adok. Um and um, uh, even Donny Boy at massive odds, at, you know, like thirty threes plus because that just absolutely just ruined its chance by being far too free. Mm-hmm. So. For you big price punters, that's where I thought. If it, if it suits your strategy, I mean, probably the, the you know, if you're if you're not adverse to laying, it's keeping all the others on side and laying the front too. Yeah, I, I, I'd t- I'd you know. say, like Adam, I think he's far. I'd I'd take on the front too, definitely. Yeah. John, I think North Lodge is maybe our race. I thought last time I was there was still signs of inexperience. I think you can take a step forward from that, but. I'm, I'm definitely wouldn't be having a bet. I mean, Alan King wouldn't do me a favour if I had him. So, 
I think North Lodge is probably the best horse in the race at the moment, yeah. this moment in time. I just think giving five pounds yeah. is a yeah. massive ask, yeah, especially as this pound. ground could be it could be pretty bad. Mm. Uh, we don't know how bad the ground is. It can, it, it, you know, it hasn't been super bad at Kelso this year. It might be on the on the better side of soft. It could be on the worst side of soft. You know, we don't know. But deep ground, I'd, I'd be really concerned about North Lodge. I just, I think if I was a layer, I'd, I'd be against Richmond Lake rather than North Lodge, to be honest. But um, yeah. Mm, I think I'd, I'd, I would concur there. Straight after that, we've got a two mile five handicap hurdle. Um, there are a couple of non-runners already. Heart of Steel and Native Fighter have already come out. Famous Bridge uh, heads the market. It was a little bit, un- I suppose, a little bit unlucky last time out. All the others are sort of much of a muchness, although for, for, to throw my hat in the ring, yeah, I, I, sort of, I know he's up in grey, but I gave Kaiser a bit of a chance in this. It wouldn't be a race I'd be getting massively involved with, but I did think he, he might be a little bit overpriced at sort of eight, nine to one. Um, you chaps, any uh, any uh, strong opinions on this? Same as you, Andy. Uh, I, I keep it to low stakes, but Kaiser, I thought was was value at the nine to one. Um, but, you know, definitely he, he's in very good, very good heart, very good order. Savage form is the words. And <laughs> I, th- I, I think that might, uh, that might just... Uh, you know, ruffle a few feathers tomorrow because he, he did look very impressive last time, and he still got he still got leeway from that mark. So Kaiser, I agree with you, Andy. Good selection. John, Adam, I'm kind of fancy famous bridge really for Cotton Wall Nicky. Um, he should be able to compete up a sub one twenty rating in this grade, but again, I, I don't feel I don't feel the urge to get massively involved to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, it's an open it's an open race. Famous bridge makes the market. I was speaking to Andy Holding um, after his last his run at Air when he beat High Stakes and High Stakes mm-hmm. went to the um, was it the Chalo thereafter uh, didn't run great didn't run great um, uh, on, on the back of a, a very quick time I think or, or a very uh, fast last lap or something that what, those kind of things that Andy Holding does yeah, he, beat, uh, he beat High Stakes ahead didn't he yeah yeah it looked good yeah. form at the time. I didn't think Famous Bridge looked as if he was. I thought he looked in trouble when he came down last time. Hmm. Um, so I, th- him heading the market suggests that, that there might be a bit of value around. Wild about Oscar was dreadful at Huntingdon. I thought he'd run better than that, even though it was off a bre- off a little break and a wind up. I think he needs fences. Um, I thought there was a couple of rags that were interesting. Democratic Oath, uh, ridden by Ryan Mania. Um, he's back at the hurdles after chasing. He's um, a nine-year-old who is a little bit unexposed, or very unexposed for his age. Um, clearly one or two training issues, but if they've got him right, he's gone off favourite a couple of times and run poorly, suggest- suggesting that they think he's well handicapped. Um, he was lame. He's, he's, lame last, when they called him up last time, he's actually lame. The, the vet yeah, was, yeah, he's, he's obviously a horse with a, with niggling issues. Sorry, he's only seven, isn't he? Not nine. So, yeah. um, no, I think I think he, the, the <coughs> leeway in his mark and he could pop up. I can see that being backed from 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 the price he is. There was one other in there called Ungolo, who Anne Duffield mm. has has taken on with these uh, these horses that have been bought and sent to her. Um, I, I suspect he's going to start looking quite well handicapped. He's run twice uh, in decent races uh, since joining Anne Duffield and shown a decent level of form since since coming from Willie Mullins. Again, uh, a double figure price at present. Might be might be quite interesting to throw a couple of darts there, but again, like you guys, it's quite quite open. I just thought that Famous Bridge looked a bit vulnerable, frankly. I think Mr. Calvin was quite keen on uh, Ngolo this week in his piece right. that I read. Yeah, I think he, uh, right. although he went backwards last time out, Ngolo not uh, not not, not teased. Yeah, uh, what was the reason for that? I thought that he doesn't stay that far. I think he's, yeah, uh, his jumping wasn't that great last time either. So yeah, so I, I can sort of I can see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just I just thought, like I mean, it's, it, it's one of those races where I, I, I wouldn't want to be back in Famous Bridge at sort of nine to four, five to two. And I thought Kaiser, maybe it might be one for a. Yeah, a, I understand the Kaiser thing. A bit of a beachway uh, prevarication. I understand the Kaiser thing. It's a funny one. I, I've, I've backed him a couple of times this year and didn't last time. And um, like you say, he's, he's still he's still fairly well in on old old form. I just just going it's up. Just whether he can handle the rising grade. It was I think I think the I think the class is the issue. I'm I'm yeah. not a massive fan of backing. Uh, low weights in, in good races personally. So yeah. I, I just I just thought there were there were other horses that were more interesting uh, at bigger odds. 
for me. Let's, let's move on to the uh, the premier chase. Uh, we already know uh, what uh, John is uh, uh, within this in Espoir de Rome. Um, I, for, for a while, my throw my few five penneth worth in the ring first is I went through this and just thought, apart probably apart from Espoir de Rome, uh, I didn't really fancy at the price. Everything had a bit of a question mark against it for me, uh, even the core specialist Big River who tends to, it t- does tend to get a bit behind, but um, his price never expands that much because everybody's worked out that that's exactly the way his he's run style is these days. Um, I think he's, what is he now at the course? He's, is he eight from eight from 11 here? Um, I suppose Windsor Castle, you've got Will the Blinkers work again. He's now off 151. Nutswell, trip would be a question mark. A Hill 16 didn't jump particularly well last time out. Um, itchy feet. I've always found a really expensive horse to follow. Not that I have. I've generally been a layer of him. Um, and it was just a race I had loads of question marks about. Lee, Adam? Any- yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I like the application of cash for Espoir de Rome because mm. he was disappointing on his reappearance, but we don't know how wound up he was that day. They do. And obviously, he's been very well bet overnight in a field where... Like you've just highlighted, Andy, that Itchy Feet is one of those horses that, you know, do you really want to back a horse that's probably pushed along out the back? I know he's blinkered for the first time, but mm-hmm. could be pushed along out the back, not enjoying it, hits the first, off the bridle by the third, and you're thinking, I've just had, you know, 50 quid at fours, and you think, well, I may as well just, you know, like set it on fire. I think, <laughs> I think a couple of, a couple of, uh, comments. Itchy feet. I, I never th- thought for one minute he'd be a he'd make it as a chaser. He, he lacks lacks size and scope, and he and and you can tell he's jumping. He struggles to get from one side to the other. It just suggest, it just shows what a, what an engine he's got. So not only does it, is he a crap jumper, he's he's clearly a mentalist as well. Um, if he's ever going to win, I think he'll fall in here with blinkers for the first time. Um, in, if the ground is particularly bad and if, if Espoir de Rome isn't the horse that he used to be. There's obviously a question mark around why he's not been absent since October, Espoir de Rome. So clearly there's been an issue after that after that Carlisle run. So that might be a little bit of a question mark. And is this a, a sort of a, a return ahead of some, some bigger target? I don't know. I've not looked at Kim's website. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I thought Itchy Feet, if he's anywhere close jumping two out uh, itchy feet could fall in but I, like you say you know i i gave up on him a long 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 time ago it's just it's just not a horse that you want on side i just the, you know, if ever if ever the, a time is to, to catch him it's with blinkers on but you, you want to be backing him at sort of seven eight nine ten rather than the sort yeah. of price he is the, the other the other thought i had regarding these horses <laughs> Yeah. The other thought I, I had regarding these horses was Hill 16, who um, was massively out of position at uh, that Donny last time behind Windsor Avenue and, and came home really strongly. He's got something like the Scottish National written all over him personally. Um, and this is it will, it'll just be ticking over in this. But he's definitely one to watch this spring on, on some, some slightly better ground. I thought Dingo Dollar could be interesting on better ground, and he's obviously got other targets as well. He's in the he's obviously yeah. national and possibly you know he ran well in the Scottish National before. Um, Sandy Thompson actually won this race before he won it back in 2017. Uh, he won this, but um, he's he just he, doesn't go on soft ground, so no, they'll, either, no. they'll either let him take his chance and uh, and you know, dog, he's yeah. got he's got to have a run somewhere before the Scottish National, so. Yeah. Um, you know, he's just going to have a spin round. So there's what, what's that? He's taken out about 14, 15 percent. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I think I think John's on a winner providing Espoir de Rome is, um, you know, is, is <laughs> so that's uh, what we like to hear. John's on a winner. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Gone all, gone all blogger on us, but there we There's go. Um, in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think I'd be a little bit concerned if it. it it's a funny thing the market drift is if you saw it drift to nine to sort of two to one nine or four you'd probably start shitting the bed but <laughs> i think that's the pro- that's the technical, time to back it technical that, term. that'd be the time to back it though to be honest you know you, you know you sort of go against what you break what what uh, you know your sort of guts are telling you just just you know it, i don't know i shit the bed because i can't afford to put the eating on <laughs> <laughs> 
60% increases, yeah. No, nobody can afford to put the eating on. No heat. Well, if, it, no. if Espoir de Rome just to nine to four, double your bet, John. That's what I suggest. Put another, pay, put another pay, for, pay for the lucky that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's about all you can have on. Right, let's move, let's move along. Uh, and move on to the more battle. I've obviously had uh, dips in here with the uh, the Irish uh, nuts and hay job autumn evening, who I hope hopefully will be. Um, gentlemen, any um, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, I'll keep it brief. Uh, don't mind yours, Andy, at all. Uh, Bouvardier probably a raspberry. Metier look yeah probably the softer the better. Uh, mm. Cormier up in grade but definitely progressive. I, I, the market's got it about right so. For me, I couldn't be asked. <laughs> Adam? <laughs> Similar sentiments. Frankly, I thought it was double tricky. 51 bags to the winner. They've got themselves a really good race. Uh, good luck if you could, if you find the winner. Right. John? Sporting bet on Vlada Rave. Ran in this last year off one far nine. Jumped very slowly at the fourth. That sort of put, him, put pay to him. Looks as though he's been brought along with something like this in mind, or another crack at the Scottish national meet afterwards. Um, very Spartan praise, twenty-five to one with a kid up taking seven off. Mm, I like Alan. Do- I like Alan Doyle, John. And a good kid, yeah. yeah. He's he's, um, he's certainly uh, he's certainly caught the eye. Well, well, well worth his seven pounds, and we finish uh, the Kelso uh, quintuple. Uh, with the uh, Cyril Alexander Memorial Novices Limited Handicap Chase uh, and with Hardy DeSoy at the head of the market. looks a, Again, it looks a bit of another tricky old contest. Um, I'll come to, well, I'll throw the floor open, boys. Yeah, I, I think this typifies Saturday, really. Some yeah. real rogues in this. <laughs> um, some real absolute hounds. Second, 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 second. Gold de Bois, the, he's got the best form in the race. You can just look back through Nuts Well. You can see it's all there in the book. The problem is with Nuts Well is the head comes up on the running and he just thinks, and he just doesn't do it. Um, Gold de Bois, yeah. Yeah, Gold de Bois. Um, mm. and, and, and Glenn Truen uh, is interesting because he's first off the wind up. Travels mm. like the wrath of God over hurdles. Who knows? I mean, I mean, you know, it's one of those. Sometimes you you, you, do, you switch disciplines, points, point winner. You know, again, the outside <laughs> currently the outsider. I feel Glenn True, and I thought could be interesting. Um, you're busy on an anti-vax match or something, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, heartbreak kid, massively up in the weights. Uh, Jabai days is what it is. Um, Hardy Desai again, very ordinary form, nine to four. You know, how many nine to four chances can you find? Probably better credentials. It's one of them races, so I'm passing it back. Adam? Yeah, uh, uh, Glenn True is interesting. I've seen him a couple of times earlier this season when he was still with, uh, was it Crawford? Um, mm. Very much a chase type on Luxley. Um, I just wonder whether he's he's well enough treated. I, I had him down as, as, as looking... Uh, as though his handicap mark is is far too high, but as you say, chasers yeah. could bring out bring out um, much more improvement in him as, uh, on the back of a wind up. Um, I looked at Heartbreak Kid for a long time. This time of year, when they're on a roll, um, that you know they can just keep keep winning, keep finding more improvement, and McCain's just keep winning, don't they? Mm. At the moment, um, but but yeah, too tricky, and, and nothing really stood out. Hardy De Sawyer, who has been receiving that weight, that um, age allowance all season, now that's down to zero. So yeah, I agreed that he looked uh, very sh- very short, even though he's clearly uh, you know half decent prospect for his age. But yeah, trappy, trappy, trappy. It was one of those um, question mark races, wasn't it? I'd be interested yeah. to see Grant Chew. The one I gave a slight chance to was Seymour Lights, but I thought he was a little bit overpriced. But again, he's a little bit up in grade. Uh, he bumped into a decent horse sort last time out, gave him a little bit of a chance. I'm probably, because I quite like Ryan Mania as a, as a rider. And Dubai Days, I think he's an absolute hound, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Um, can, but um he can win from off the pace. You have to be a little bit careful with him. But um, and you also got to remember that the race is named after the trainer's father. Uh, Cyril I think if I think, I think if father. Gold, I think if if Gold Dubois is it is he really seven or eight to one Gold Dubois? Yeah, it's yeah. massive. It's nine to one. It's massive. Yeah. It's the best I mean, form in the race. Yeah, I mean you've got to back that sort of two places or or three places yeah. or or something like that because. 
uh, it is what he is. That funambula civil form is is you know mm. way, way ahead of anything that you know. Glenn True and hasn't even jumped a fence yet. Uh, Seymour Lights couldn't be even beat our dear across last time, and Gold Dubois only given him a two or three pounds. You know, um, yeah, I, he's it's just, just the uh, running. You watch his head; it's yeah. tiring. Yeah, I agree. The running. It's, it's he's so turned. annoying. He's got. He's, yeah. been, he's been turned over at some uh, some short enough prices on um, several on several occasions. I just wonder with no, with, there may not be. Does Heartbreak Kid make the make the running? I can't. I can't remember. Let me just have a check. Uh, does, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really. I, I wonder if if Connor kicks on here and goes on makes the running because the rest won't. Um, I, I don't know. That'd might be park a good him tactic. Well, that, that's I always say... a good tactic for horses that won't pass. Yeah, mm. might just park him on the front end and just pop away. Mm. You know, I don't know. I don't know. That that might be your angle at that price or, or back him. Uh, you know, win in the in the win market and the two place market maybe. I mean, Gold, Gold Dubois uh, at prices in running from under, well, three to one or under has been one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Has there been, you go. Has been turned over, yeah. and three of those, three of those are at odds on, and a further three are inside the two to one marker. So, I think that sort of <laughs> tells you what you're getting. I think if you have backed him. Um, and he is going well approaching the last, uh, then you want to be pushing a bit of pink button at least to save your stakes. Agreed. Well, I think that's the play, isn't it? I think yeah. at, at those odds, that is the play. Either that or back him in the two, it, to, to be first or second. Yeah, in, the, in, those, yeah. in those places. Or in a, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the, probably the way we've uh, summed that up. Let's move on to uh, to Doncaster. Um, I, the uh, the 220 is that, that good mayor's novice's hurdle. Um, I think Adam... Uh, as uh, you've um, you put gave us Holly Hartingo in that, didn't you? I've shown uh, my hand in that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's. Um, I, I think that I, I like again. I, that's the sort of strategy I like there. Where I would probably, if you if you don't want to take on, uh, get a tonic um, from the, uh, the, the the front end of the market. It was drifting a little bit. I did think that Holly Hartingo and Miss Fairfax were fair enough to back against it in a maybe in a split stake. Yeah, they were my they were my two on the shortlist, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. That well, that would be my way of playing it. Uh, John Lee, agree, um, agree. Yeah, I'm massively against get a tonic. No idea why they put in five to four. Um, semi sort of flattered. I felt at Warwick. <coughs> it, it went steady all four in a bunch, turning for home. The ones with the best pace, uh, Marie's Rock and Get a Tonic came to the four. This is three mile in a slog. Get a tonic really is not a three you look at the pedigree there's nothing there to say this yeah. one three mile and a slog you can lay this till the cows come home at five to four and six to four cannot have it and like adam selections a, a, a selection here is perfectly acceptable mm. um just to mention also the gazette bourgeois that you look at that family that's dower dower family um love, <laughs> lo, loves 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 staying. Um, beat beat a, a well handicapped one of Doctor Newlands, the good doc, the real good doctor. Good doctor. Yeah, it's not the other yeah. doctor. Um, and um, Gazette Bourgeois, I thought could could run a season's best uh, under under very testing conditions. But there's to a, take eight to one. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a way that you could use that uh, that Kelso strategy again if you're not a layer by nature. And I understand people don't, some people don't like laying or you know, just against it. Um, there's there's two or three that you could back against there and, and dutch them, work out, you know, which one yep. you want to win the most and maybe, you know, use the outsider of the three for, you know, save at least save your stakes or something. And it always comes up as a, a sort of pseudo lay there because every time you, in effect, you're backing one, you are laying the rest of the field as well. Yes. But, um, that's uh, one way of losing that. The two-mile handicap chase that comes up after that, I think, uh, well, myself and Adam have shown our hands in here. John, Lee, anything that you would... Um, like to uh, mention in the 255 at Donny. Um, yeah, obviously, like what you said, King Darjon, I, I've got in mind for a spring race on good ground. Um, you know, it's one of those. It's, uh, the entity are clearly with thinking, oh, Doncaster used a producer yeah. good to soft, but they've had the deluge and that they'll, they'll run because what they'll do is with David England, I mean, I, you know, they'll just. They'll, they'll make sure this is buried. They'll, like you said, Andy, they might yeah. get like three or four pound off. One three five come the spring air. That's the one to look for. Mm. Um, you know, Adams Nap Cheddleton again. He's he's got a bit of class about him. He's just frustrating. Um, 
I, it's a difficult one for me to play in this, so I'd say it's sort of, that that race sort of summed up Saturday's racing for me. It just every it race is just very really tough. tricky and difficult, and yeah, you sort of think if you get a couple of winners, you're going to be quids in, but you could end up doing your doing your donuts as well. And what, I, what I'd like to see, what I'd like to see would be a clincher for me is if is if Channelton um, if if they bounced him out and sat on the front end. I, I, mm. I'm surprised that they sort of hold on to him when he's such an enthusiastic character. Mm. Um, he's a tough horse, isn't he? I, I like his attitude. Yeah, great attitude. Yeah. I just he gets he, yeah. he runs free and then gets gets tapped for toe at the wrong times. So I think he needs a bit further. You know mm. what I mean? So yeah. um, it's a funny one, really. But mm. I, I just I just think may, maybe this O'Keefe character. I've never heard of the guy. Um, uh, maybe he'll just ride him a bit differently. Uh, there's no. Uh, there are horses that can go on i'd like to see him um ridden a little bit more positively now they they know he wants further and if he's enthusiastic we'll just let him go for it and it is it is of course Doncaster. if you get in a rhythm um it, you are hard to pull back really. you've got to be on the front end yeah. you've got to be on yeah. the front end Andy. they very yeah. very rarely come from anywhere back mm. further back unless they go too hard you know yeah. um yeah. you've got to be on the front end and i just I do like horses, it's a positive I'm ride good. yeah John, any thoughts on the, this uh, tra uh, trappy, tra uh, trappy, tricky two-mile handicap? You've got my chance of catching me chucking one up pretty Patel and everything. Right. <laughs> I think she's. I think she's gone. I think they've got. I think she's gone to Poland as if they haven't suffered enough mm. before people uh, fleeing. <laughs> persecution. Okay, let Valencia have them out on straight again if she turns up. Talking of pretty Patel brings me nicely, segues me nicely into the Grimthorpe, which probably. <laughs> Probably sum her up quite nicely. Um, it Man, is, you think I mean, Teddy's chucked one up, Ali? <laughs> he might have. Steady. You wouldn't put it past him, would you? I wouldn't. No. Yeah. Yeah. Party let's, on. Let's, um, let's, uh, Keep to, going, Andy. Keep going. We'll have to, we'll have to stay it well. Johnny, I've, 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 I've got images now. I've got images now, haven't I? It's like when he <laughs> talks about keeping people in cellars and things like that. I've got images. <laughs> right. Grimthorpe, any thoughts, boys? Uh, well, Lee, Lee, Lee Keys has spoken for uh, as, as yes. you know, pretty, pretty, told, you, pretty much told us what to do. You know so, this goes off fab. You know it does. You yeah, know well, it does it does. Well, I, 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 I sort of agree and disagree, Andy. I, I had it. I, it, it looks wide open betting wise. <sighs> The two that caught my eye were under supervision and Mr. Malarkey. I just, I just, felt, it's funny with Malarkey because the Tizards, the farmers, said that he doesn't like soft ground, that he wants decent ground, um, and so they they ran him most often on ground that wasn't that bad. It, although his one win came, on, <laughs> yes. came, came. It was it the, it wasn't the Reynolds stand, was it? It was a handicap where it, it got really heavy on the day. There's no he ground it out. It's, yes. he's, one, yeah, he's one of these. He's one of these horses that that looks a thorough stayer, but they run it over you know, extended distances, and he sort of uh, on decent ground and he gets outpaced. I, I agree that uh, three two round here on on soft ground is going to be right up his street. I agree with that. I just I just felt that bearing in mind the fact he's not run a race since uh, twelve months ago, um, I just I, I felt that eight. Eight, nine, ten to one might be something that we could look forward to. So I was a little bit disappointed with the uh, with the opening show, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but the, but I can see that the, I can see that the the, the, the bandy effect has, has kicked in there straight away, hasn't it? Um, very rarely do they go on back. So he's he's definitely definitely one of the more interesting ones. Under supervision is a little bit more. Um, um, under the not under the radar, but he's a, he's a novice, isn't he? Um, mm. Thrown in against against much more experienced horses. So I thought I thought you know from an unexposed perspective, I thought he might be in interesting. And in and they went straight over three miles as soon as he left his bumper bumper phase. So clearly they think he just stays forever. Uh, so they, they were the two that, that that appealed to me at longer odds. With like you guys said, Le Milos just looks opposable at the odds. Storm mm. control finds it hard to win anything other than a wet race that he can just dominate. Although, you know, you can't knock his run last time, but, um, you know, he just sort of came to the end of his tether. The rest don't really appeal. Uh, so, yeah, I think we've got it nailed, to be honest. 
Mm. I, I like I like Powers Town Park. I'm just not sure about him on the ground. To be honest, it looks like he's been scratched, Dan. They looking at the looking. Oh, at does the he? Oh, he's still, yeah. still on. He's still in. A, he's still in on Betfair, but um, you, you can never tell with there because they won't take him out until about the about the last minute before the race. Because right, right, I they're... think he might be scratched, old boy. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> That, uh, that's, 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 that saves that plan. John, any thoughts on the on the Grimthorpe? I'd, I'd just rock along with Lee's selection, to be honest. I'd have been really keen on cloth cap on decent ground, but I don't think even run, actually. Mm. Right, we must speed along. The uh, the two races on the box at Newbury, the 115 and the 150, the veterans. Uh, we've already got Lee's selection in that. Um, the... the, uh, the the one that actually been they actually backed this quite a bit actually when I was looking at this last night because I thought he had a bit of a chance as well uh, Corto Rico as well um, it's a, you know I always try and back the the young in the veterans I always try and back the ten year olds but um, that they uh, they weren't they were all much of a muchness in in this particular race it was nothing I, I thought if Indy Five got a, got his own way in front and he does need his own way in front. He was vaguely interesting, but if anything gets up and alongside him, he tends to uh, tends to drop the lot. Um, maybe Saint Xavier, little bit of a chance. Barb wasn't particularly interested in the race. John, Adam, any interest in this? I thought Indy Five was the, was the lay of the day. To be honest, I, I can't yeah. stand the horse. Absolutely, as <laughs> soft as uh, he is, quite soft. Yeah, soft as a soft thing. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Corto Rico is a horse that I've adored for many a year. Um, He's uh, he's just been poorly campaigned by the farmer, going for big races that he can't really win most of the time. Um, yeah, dicked about on the running at Donny. Hughes Hughes has ridden him loads throughout his career, but um, rode him very strangely at Doncaster when I, I, I backed him to win in December. Um, so I've got tons of previous with him. I can understand Lee's uh, angle in that he's he should be favourite. Just I just think that that ASO could fall in if 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 the rest I, I just think he'll travel he should just keep traveling and jumping and i know he he doesn't really stay this far does he i don't know probably he's just perhaps he's just getting a bit slow but ran okay with this trip behind um bally uh sorry black line at haydock in the in the in the slop which <laughs> suggests that he does stay oh, this far that was now for a slop that day wasn't it yeah <laughs> i just uh, it's it's it, to be honest it's not really worth you know, going too deep into the race. No, no, it's no, full, of, it's, it's full of crap. Well, uh, Corto Rico will travel. Aso will jump and, and do his thing. I think the pair will be clear. And it's after the last two who who stays on the straightest and the best. To be honest, the rest will be miles behind. Yeah. I, I urge listeners to uh, look at the stats this year for the witch and uh, uh, Ginger McCain. Um, they, they are absolutely flying. They're literally on twenty five percent. The pair. This year, this year. <laughs> so, so the nuts and hay, GB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. something's going to, on. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to um, have that name. Um, you're going to try and get that name, nuts and hay, GB, aren't you? Yeah. It's, it's been all over Facebook all week. Jason McIver, our well-known feed merchant up here, has been yes, the best feed over Northern Yards. Delivering bags of magic carrots. Yes, yes. Been yes. going round the northern yards delivering yes. bags of carrots. There's, mm-hmm. there's even been photographic evidence posted on Facebook. Everybody up north has had the carrots. So mm-hmm. expect fireworks at the fez. <laughs> <laughs> wow. the, Been going back to the days of the thinker. Oh, yeah. Arthur Stevens. They showed that they showed that this week on uh, RTV and there when they were showing some old, uh, old um, gold Blimey. cups as well. And the, the I bet there wasn't a dry in the eye smoke. in the Richmond house, was there? <laughs> Nineteen eighty-seven. That was. Yeah. Uh, Thinker. Yeah. Agree, just going back yeah. to he's just going back to Aso. He's been he's been dropped five pounds from his last run, which is which is very kind of of the assessor who are uh, they're giving these old timers a lot more leeway these days. Um, just something to bear in mind when you're looking at this race. He just looks well handicapped compared to the to the nonsense that are, you know the sort of the old plodders that are uh, quite sure. close to him now in the weights. Right, and yeah. we must uh, we must yes. hurry along. The uh, the Greatwood is the last race. The one fifty. I've already rode in with uh, Pumpkins, Tamrock, the Mathern here. We'll probably go and win it with the other one in Amwell Amwell de Nuit now. But um, any thoughts on this, boys? 
if you're a if you're a friend of John Joe Lang, then I'd, I'd make sure you're socially distanced this uh, tomorrow because it could be a, a, a Venetia wank fest in Newbury. <laughs> Leave if, if the Ace, so if Aso wins and then Farinet goes in in the second, I quite like Farinet. Mm. And uh, John's tipped it in the past um, when it won, I believe. Um, and um, <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought there was plenty of horses to oppose in this. Looking at the racing today, it didn't look that soft at all at, uh, at the Berkshire venue. And Glenn Forza who has been tipped by Sir Lee Keys. I thought it absolutely fell in at, at Musselburgh last time. I thought it was a pathetic Terrible. race. Terrible. Uh, can't be with that. Uh, but but Lee, had a, you know, you've, you've made a, a, a good case that uh, it's a race worth tackling because there are so many weaker uh, uh, angles in there. Senior Citizen is is quite interesting, but he's just looking a bit high in the weights now for you know, a horse that puts everything in. The rest have been pretty disappointing. Paint the Dream's not gone on this year. Kaluki's back in Trip and More, didn't we? He fell in last time. Tamarock. I, I mean, I can see it, definitely. I can absolutely see that winning. St still young enough for, for, for PFN to turn it around. He's just got to put a, you know, a, a lengthy run of poor, poor showings behind him. But, he can, yeah, but you, can, you can expect Nichols to have him cherry ripe for this. I had it between Tamarock and uh, Farinay. Mm, that that could be one for Andy to sit on the throne for the weekend with Tamarock. Yeah. Mm. You know, like, like with you on the on the Billy Idol. You know? <laughs> Andy yeah. sits on the throne for this week, <laughs> much to the much to the absolute disdain of of, of our colleagues, myself, Adam, and John. Yeah. Andy could oh. sit on the throne. You never, you week. never know yeah. with that. Senior sitters is actually a horse I I would love to see. He jumps those big fences at Aintree so well. Uh, I'd love to see him win the Topham, but he um he always travels work really well there and just doesn't quite get home. Um. I, I've had the misfortune to back him, I think twice then. He's traded odds on on the running and uh, not quite got home, but uh, maybe he needs a bit bit better ground. But um, that concludes our uh, race through the uh, the 10 race papuri of uh, Triumvirate of Courses, Kelso, Donkster and Newbury. Any other business, boys? Anything else that uh, you want to get off your chest or uh, tell the listeners about this week before I conclude the show? No, just the sermon as always. We have an exclusive as well on, oh. the, on the Sunday sermon. Just an exclusive, yes. All right. Okay. Right. Well, at, uh, at that juncture, this is another Bar Stewart Inquiry. It's Andy Richmond signing off. Be safe, be good, and hopefully back a few winners this weekend. And may your God go with you. Bye for now. Right, the show's over, boys. Thank you very much.